And today, this week's goodbye is from chapter 66. 66. Entitled, Tahrim. Tahrim. The banning or prohibiting or the forbidden. Tahrim. The word Tahrim, Tahrim, comes from the same root as Haram. Tahrim. The unlawful. This chapter gets his name. It's only 12 ayat. It's a Medina surah. It gets his name from the first ayat in that chapter. From the first ayat in that chapter. Where Allah says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Ya ayyuhan nabiyu. He addressing the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Ya ayyuhan nabiyu. Lima to harimu. To have to harimu haram. Lima to harimu ma ahla. Ahla. Hala. Hala. Ahla Allahu. Like that. So Allah says, Ya ayyuhan nabiyu. Lima to harimu ma ahla. Lahu. Like that. And that is this. O oh, Prophet, why do you to harimu, make haram, make haram, ma ahalla Allahu like that, what Allah has made permissible for you. He's addressing Muhammad the Prophet in this chapter here. Why, why do you make haram, forbid, what Allah has made halal for you, like that? Tebtegi mordote ezwajike zawj. Seeking to please your zawj, your mate. And the last week's chapter was talaq, uh, the divorce. And we touched on that. So these sort of really connect. Okay? This is in Medina, where the community is formed. And Allah dressing, giving us guidance on natural issues, community issues, family issues. It's a community now. It's not in Medina where it's beginning. And the short revelations are coming and he's just teaching Tawdahid. Now a community has formed. The Umar's formed there in Medina. So Allah says to Muhammad the Prophet, the situation developed. Why you make haram? That which I have made halal for you, seeking to please your zawj, your wives. And he says, Allahu Gafurum Rahim, that Allah is the forgiving, the merciful. But you can't make this haram. What I may allow, seeking to please your mate. Now, as you know, last week's cookbook was from chapter 65 of the Quran, entitled Talaq, Divorce. And in that cookbook, we discussed the importance of family. Of family. The importance of family. And how the Kaaba that we turn towards every day for Salat is a symbol of family. Because it's called a house, Beitola, Beitolati, Beitul Ula, house. A house suggests home life. Home life suggests family. And Allah say, turn from wherever you are in the direction of that. Meaning always keep your family in mind, wherever you are and whatever you do. Your family and the family of man. We also pointed out from the Quran. And that's sort of the divorce, Tala, the three-month waiting period or trial period concerning divorce in Islam. So we're in this chapter. And we show the connection with the three aspects 
or functions of the mind in the three types or classifications of the soul with those three month waiting period for divorce from that chapter and the uh, three types of the soul we know nefsin amara nefsin lawama nefsin mutmaina so moving quickly back to this chapter um, this week's chapter 66 which connects with 65 and just as last week's was entitled the, the divorce this week's chapter also mentions divorce now before we go further into this chapter we have to say something about Muhammad the Prophet Sallallahu and we have to know our religion the Quran Islam it addresses every major aspect of human life every aspect and gives us guidance and wisdom in every essential aspect of human life so now we went through a chapter entitled divorce now is one the uh, uh, forbidden so Muhammad the prophet was a wise man Muhammad the Prophet was a wise and a compassionate, compassionate person. He was a man of high morals and excellent character, even before he became the Prophet. He was an honorable and noble and truthful person, sensitive, compassionate human being. When he became the prophet, his moral standards and life was raised to immense height. And although he was the messenger of Allah, he was the messenger of Allah and our prophet. And although he was that, he was still to be seen as a mortal human being just like all other human beings although he was Allah's messy he is Allah's messenger and the seal of the prophets he was he is still not to be seen as an angel or supernatural being he was still to be seen as a human being like all of us with hands, legs, feet, eyes got sick, he bled he hungered, he thirsted, he got angry a mortal human being like us his mother was Amina his father Abdullah Now that's, we're laying that as a preface as we go into this chapter. Now, keep in mind, he was a, he's our model, a human model. Allah says in the Quran twice, and once in Surah chapter 18, ayat 110, and in 41, ayat 6, he tells Muhammad to keep us balanced and to caution us. He says this, Cool, told Muhammad, cool, that's safe, that's safe, cool. In the man and that best shirun myth lukun. Tell them I'm a bashir, I'm a mortal, myth lukun, just like all of you. You can find it in the Quran chapter 18 and chapter 41. He said, tell them. So they won't make a God out of you, won't make an angel out of you, won't make you my son, or any of these things. He said, tell them, and at Bashirun, that you are mortal. Say, I am a mortal, Bashirun myth lakum. You know, we say, assalamu alaikum, peace be on all of you. I'm a mortal just like you. <coughs> You have illa ya inna ma illa hukum illa hun wa hidum. But I have been in 
inspired or it has been revealed to me that your Lord is one Lord. He got revelation. That's what made him the prophet. But he was a mortal human being walking, eating, had wives, children, shop, swept the floor, etc. Just like you. But Allah inspired in that mortal human being, deposited in him the revelation of the Quran to say to those back then and to us now and forever that your Lord, your Reb, is one God. Not 300 and some odd, not four, not five. Elahukum, your Elah, your God, Elahun Wahidun, is one. But he was a mortal human being just like us. Walking like us, eating like us, a mortal human being. But Allah, again, deposited in that mortal human being, who they used to say man is born in sin, that they are born naturally sinful. Allah said no. He says, Lakat Kalak Nal and Sanafi Asani Tokwing. I have certainly created man in the best mode. And Muhammad the Prophet, salam, he stayed in that excellent mold. He never veered. He never worshipped the idols. He never got out of the beautiful human character. So much so, Allah says, he says, surely we have beheld you, Kulu Ken Adin, on a high plane of moral standard and creation. He never veered. And so Allah deposited in him the Quran so that he could tell the world, your God is one. Part of he, most important concept, don't commit shirk. Your God is one God. So please let us keep this in mind. So Allah also gives us more good help and keeping the proper perspective of our prophet and his messenger Muhammad Sallallahu He gives us even more. In chapter 17, ayat 95, Allah says, He says this to Muhammad. He says, Cool, cool, say, Lau. كان في الأرض ملائكة يمشون مطمئنين. Say if there was walking in the earth angels in peace and quiet. مطمئنة. نفس المطمئنة, right? Tranquil, at ease. There was walking in the earth angels. In peace and quiet. Lenezona Alehim Menel Samai Samai Samai. I would send down from the sky Melekin Rasulin, an angel as a messenger. So he gives us more help to let us know. You're human beings, I give you a human being as a messenger that can relate to you as human beings. But if you were angels walking on the earth, I would, in peace and quiet, <laughs> in tranquility, I would send you not from the earth, I would send you from Samaria, from the sky. Because when we look to the sky, we see a sense of peace, right? That's why. I would send you from the sky, an angel as a messenger. But I sent you a human being raised up from the earth that can relate to you and you can relate to him as a model and that's what you follow. So as a mortal like us, living in a human world, Allah did not exempt Muhammad the Prophet Sallallahu from some of the everyday challenges and difficulties of human family life. 
This is a preface for us going into this surah. He is a model for human beings. And he has some of the same difficulties that we have as human beings in our personal life and our family life in the world. Muhammad the prophet has some of the same family marital problems that normal, regular human being families have. And I'm doing this because that's what this sort of deals with. And that is one of the main things this chapter shows us. That Muhammad the prophet Islam, has some of the same difficulties in his family, in his marriage, etc. that we have. That some of us have. That human beings have. That this is a part of community life. Remember, 65 is the divorce. Dollar. You got to touch on. We're touching on each chapter. This one is the forbidden. And it starts out saying, Muhammad, why you want to make forbidden that which I have for yourself, what I have made allow for you. Let us close the first part of the cookbook. Rabbana ati nafi dunya hasanatain wa fi akirati hasanatain wa kinaat ha bin na. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulahi kareem. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear believers, Muslim brothers and sisters, I greet you again. As-salamu alaykum. Alhamdulillah. In touching on each chapter of the Quran, on each chapter of the Quran as we go through the Quran, and as we're reading now in Ramadan, each chapter, although they're connected, they're different. And as we've been going through each chapter, and in preparing the kutbah, I have to say, as we're exposed to more and touching on each chapter, some chapters a little more difficult than others, a little more sensitive, a little more touchy than others. But if we're going to touch on each chapter, we have to go through each chapter until we complete the Quran, inshallah. So that was a preface, that Muhammad Islam, a mortal just like us. The wives of the Prophet, the wives of the Prophet, Muhammad Sallallahu the wives of the Prophet, knowing they were honorable women, noble women, women of beautiful and great character, the wives of the Prophet, knowing that he is the messenger of Allah, the seal of the Prophets, the Quran living, the living Quran. Knowing that, some of them, they still annoyed him with some of the same nonsense that we annoy each other with in marriages and in mates and in relationships. Knowing that he's the prophet, knowing that he's the messenger, knowing he's the Quran living, they annoyed him and he has some of the same difficulties that we annoy each other with in our relationships. So he went there, he's a mortal just like us. And he has some of the same experiences as a model to help us. You might think that since they realized that, he was, that they were married to the prophet and the messenger of Allah, that they were no better than that. Now we go to the Quran. So it's 66. Ayat 3, starting with 3. We started with 1 already. So we'll... And I'm saying 3 because it goes straight to what I just said. Ayat 3. It says this here. And we'll read it in English for the sake of time. Here's an example, right, from the Quran. When the prophet disclosed a matter in confidence to his wife, it's between them. 
in confidence. That's what it says. To one of his wives, and she then divulged it to somebody else. It was in marriage, in confidence, private. He told her something, story, whatever. And he used the word hadith, a report, to one of his wives. And then she went and, yes, yeah, spread the news to somebody else. But Allah made it known to Muhammad the Prophet. Allah made it known to him. And it says here, he confirmed part thereof and repudiated a part. So Allah made it known to him that she had told this private conversation with him and his wife. And it says... When he approached her, then when he told her thereof, she said, normal response, well, who told you? And you go straight to the Quran, it's not Mustafa. Well, normal response, right? See, they're mortal human beings too. You can't marry them after the prophet, and they're especially women, but they're normal too, you know? They're human beings. Well, who, who, who told you that? Now we might say don't worry about it. I know. That's all that counts. <laughs> look how the prophet, look how the prophet said Islam. Look how he, he responded. Call that. He said, he said, Nebe, Nebe, Niel, Elimul Kabir. The one who informed me is the Noah the most aware. <laughs> the one who knows everything informed me of what you did. <laughs> so we preface it. You see, normal family problems, right? So then Allah says to the to the two, we won't get into what the whole conversation was, but he shared it with one, she shared it with the other one, with his other wife for another purpose, etc., etc., right? Got some gossip going. So then Allah says to them, to them, He says, if you two turn in repentance for what you did to your husband, the prophet, if you turn in repentance, your hearts are inclined to do that because you're decent women. If you turn, Allah will forgive you. But if you back each other up against him, truly Allah is his protector. And the angel Jabril is his protector. And every righteous one among you who believes is his protector. And furthermore, the angels will back him up. Now, here Allah says this, connecting with the previous chapter. He says, Asa Rambuhu and Talaka Kuna. Then it may be if he divorce you all, all of you, that Allah will give him in exchange better wives. Then this is Quran, let you know he go through the same things that we go through, right? He says, if he, he might divorce all of you be, behind this, Allah will give him better, maybe Allah will give him better wives. And how would they be better? Muslimati mu'minatin. More submissive to their Lord as Muslims. Better believers. More devout, you do canoe, right? That's calling that. More devout, more repentant, and who worship in humility, and who travel for faith and fast, and they may be previously married women or virgins. 
So if he decides to divorce you, Allah may give them. So what? This is this chapter. But it's to bring home to us, Muhammad the Prophet, a mortal human being, experience some of the same things that normal, regular human beings experience. Although he was the messenger of Allah, he was not exempt from the difficulty, challenges of human life. And that's the man we can follow. That's our leader. Because he relates directly to us. It's not a strange creature that don't relate or can't relate to our everyday situations as human beings. So, but Allah wants family, we know that, to be together and strong. So after that, in ayat 6, Allah says this, Not in the dark, 
and every chapter of the Quran is intended for us to be in the light. Like we deal with the sensitive issue of divorce, of family. That is given to us, although it may be sensitive, for us to have light with our right hand. That for on a conscious way and in a strong way that we have light to guide us through every dark situation. And our family's dark situation can't figure this out. I love my wife. I love my husband. I love my family. But we're having problems and difficulties, right? But we want guidance. We want light. So Allah says, turn in repentance. Turn to him for everything, brothers and sisters. For business, for family, for everything. And pray that he will give us a light, as he says, to those who believe. And turn to him in sincerity. So, Allah says, just not to leave it a certain way. And presenting to Muhammad and presenting to us, this is important, brothers and sisters, we all go through these things. He says to Muhammad, and I'm reading mostly in English just really for the time, Allah sets forth an example. He says he gave it to the unbelievers to look at this. The wife of Noah and the wife of Lot. They were respectively under two of our righteous servants. But they were false and betrayed their husbands. And they, pro and, and they profited nothing before Allah on their account. But were told, enter you the fire along with others that enter. That Muhammad the prophet, you're going through this. Brothers and sisters, you're going through this. But know that Allah's prophets and messengers before Muhammad, they went through difficulties as well. And we know of Lot, Allah said, leave the twin cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. And don't look back to that glittery city that's being destroyed. Fire and brimstone. Look straight ahead. Keep your eye on the goal. Know which way you're traveling. Lot, and tell your family and nobody, don't look back. Keep your eye on the goal. So they're moving out. Fire and brimstone, the, the, the glitter of Sodom and Omar is falling, being destroyed. And they're moving out. And he said, come on, honey, we got to keep straight ahead. And she, she took, come on, don't look back, baby. I, I know they had a lot of gold and jewelry and all the beautiful things that we like. But it's been destroyed. Don't look back. And the Quran say, and she looked back. And she turned to a pillar of salt. Stuck. I Means she got stuck back in yesterday. Couldn't let go of the past. But Noah, but Lot didn't look back. Not even for her. He stayed on the gold, kept going. I got to leave you there. You looking back at the blood. Allah told us, look ahead. We got to make the goal, brothers and sisters. Stay focused on the objective. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad or Rasulullah. Don't let nothing from yesterday, your past, my past, cause you to look back to the drugs, to the alcohol, to the things we used to do before we got the focus on Islam. Stay focused on where we have to go. It says, his wife looked back. But brothers and sisters, Allah would, wouldn't leave it like that for us to be thinking, oh, we can say, oh, you see those sisters, you know, Muhammad the prophet had a problem with his wife. Like, no, 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 no. Allah closes this surah with this. Allah sets forth an example to those who believe. The wife of Pharaoh. Say, behold, she said. Now, Pharaoh some of the Pharaohs was oppressors, right? One of them thought he was God, right? He was a tyrant. He wouldn't submit, right? But his wife, Allah says, uh, 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 his wife, behold, she said, Oh my Lord, build for me a mansion close to you, a mansion and a garden, and save me from Pharaoh, my husband, and his doings. And save me from those that do wrong. 
Now here's one that went, that was with an oppressor, with a bad guy, with a tyrant. But she said, no, I got to do the right thing. I got to do the right thing. And he closes this sort of with these words. And remember Mary. Mm. Is, it not, is it about women being bad? No, he checks it. And remember Mary, the daughter of Imran, who guarded her chastity. And we breathe into her of our spirit. And she testified to the truth of the words of her Lord and of his revelation and was one of the devout servants. See how the Quran, see how that, how that go, that start out, you know, Muhammad the prophet had a problem with his wife, but no, Allah said, no, uh-uh. Remember the wife of Pharaoh and remember Miriam, a righteous woman who was devout. So that's this sort of here, 66. Last week was 65. This is 66. We're going through each chapter. And we have to prepare it. We have to dive in, dive in and look at it, work it out, try to get the understanding and present it in the best way that we can. But the best thing to do is come from Quran. And this is Quran. So we leave us with this, that Muhammad the Prophet, Salaam, the seal of the prophets, the messenger of Allah, the mortal human, a mortal like us, the model human being, know that he had difficulties like everyone else. So much so Allah revealed, he says, know this in Duha. He says, by the glorious morning light, your Lord has not forsaken you, nor is he displeased. Muhammad was crying. When comes the help of Allah? He was suffering so much. When comes the help of Allah? Allah said the help is always near. He said, but remember this. He said, by the glorious morning light and by the night when it is still, your Lord hasn't forsaken you, nor is he displeased. And he says, he says, soon I will give you that which will please you. And that's, what he, that's what he told him. He said, and the future will be better than the present. And then he drew his attention to where he came from. Don't forget where you came from. He said, did I not find you an orphan and give you shelter? Did I not find you wandering and give you guidance? Go read that, that sort of there, right? Do I? Well, Shamsi, what do I have? Follow it through. And did not find you dependent and make you independent. So you're suffering and struggling now. But just think where you came from, Muhammad Sallallahu Think where you came from, brothers and sisters, as we go through our difficulties with health, with sickness, with family, whatever your jobs. Just remember, that doesn't mean Allah has not forsaken you or is displeased that the future will be better than the present. But you have to be like Lot and keep your eye on the future. And the future will be better than the present. But we all here can definitely say, I know it, that's right, remember where you came from. It was worse. And whatever we're dealing with now, by the grace of Allah, we can overcome it, inshallah. So let us close. Rabbana Ati Nafi Dunya Hassan Atain, Rafi Akirati Hassan Atain, Waki Nath Abinah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Ikama Salat.